Next, we welcome Dr. Asam Ali from Auburn University. Uh, good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here and uh, to, a pleasure to join all of you. Uh, I want to thank uh, ICBA and, uh, and John and your professional team. It's just been incredible uh, in terms of arranging this conference. You guys are lucky to have such an excellent group. I also want to recognize my Auburn colleagues, War Eagle. War Eagle. Hi. Uh, and I want to thank all of you for joining us today as well. Uh, the Everything School, right? Um, so I want to talk with you today about the story of creation. Now, with all due respect to Michelangelo and his incredible frescoes, I want to affirm for all of you that you are also creators, that we are also creators. We create content. So I want to talk a little bit more about creation of learning materials. Now, you may be thinking, am I really a creator? But maybe you've taken photos. Maybe you've created videos. Some of you guys may be artists. Or maybe you've just really well crafted that email that you really had to send to somebody. All of you are creators. And so I want to talk with you in the context of learning, creation of learning materials, and how universities like ours fit in with that. Auburn University is a large, uh, a fairly large public university, four-year, land-grant R1 institution, about 30,000 students located in Auburn, Alabama. Uh, we're currently known for our basketball program, ranked number one in the country, but we also have a gold medalist on the gymnast, and we have a campus full of creators. So, I want to tell you that, that, just like in Michelangelo's fresco, as the fingers are about to touch, we are also on the cusp of a new age of creation. And what I mean by that is I want to talk with you in the context of a platform or a resource that all of us are familiar with, and I want to use that as kind of a guidepost. So all of us are familiar with the World Wide Web. Some of us may have used the World Wide Web in the, back in the mid-90s when it was just a collection of static pages. This is Amazon.com from 1995. Not a lot of interactivity, but you can click the links. Hopefully, if you're lucky, they don't do the blinking, flashy thing that was kind of common. Uh, some poor color choices from McDonald's, but you know, true to their image. So if we use the World Wide Web as a guidepost, or the internet as a guidepost for how we're entering a new creative age, the first phase of the internet was the static internet, right? The idea of being able to interact with web pages, maybe get some information. And around 2004 and later, so the last 15 to 17 years, we've been in this platform economy where we as creators continue and create content. But it's really owned and controlled by a few large tech companies, which we don't get a say in in terms of how information is shared or who owns it, even if we've created it. And now with newer technology coming out, such as you know, we hear the buzzwords of blockchain or decentralization. Those are words that I want you to think about over the next three to five years in terms of how they'll impact you. We're entering the ownership economy where we finally get recognition for the fact that we are creators, but we also get an opportunity to retain ownership of what we've created. Now, we see this in the entertainment, the idea of content ownership and content creation. We're seeing it in, in other industries, right? We're seeing it in entertainment where uh, a lot of large entertainment companies are buying up content libraries. And, uh, and I want to share with you that higher education is not immune to that trend. So I'll give you a few examples. At Auburn University, we're part of the Adobe uh, Creative Campus, as many of your universities may be. That means all of our students have access to tools and part of the Adobe Creative Suite, many of our faculty as well. What this means is they have direct access to tools that allow them to create either graphics, video, website, other digital content that exists that can be a part of their learning experience. At Auburn University, I also had the chance of establishing about seven years ago a unit called Auburn Online. Instructional designers, creative designers that actually build content that goes directly into our learning management system. Here's an example of a virtual experience of students creating academic posters that they can then navigate through in a virtual environment. You may be familiar with the classic task of having to memorize the bones in a biology class. We've created a, a, an experience that ties right into Canvas that allows students to practice that activity. I'm not gonna tell you how many tries it took me to record this particular sequence, <laughs> but I could try it until I got all of them right to share with you. Also adding context to learning. In this example, a history course can add context of time and place right within the learning context of the learning management system. 
we are creators. We are creating lots of content that can be used in many different ways. There are also other signs. We're not alone in creating content at Auburn. We recognize that there are a lot of others who recognize that access to content that's being created at universities is of value. Recently, we've joined uh, Big EO Center is the unit that I oversee. We've joined with our Office of Information Technology over two years to invest close to half a million dollars in, in empowering our faculty to create virtual experiences and content in, through different projects. So what's missing in all of this? If we truly are all creators, and that's where I think bookstores have a, an incredible opportunity of being the excellent collaborators that you already are. And I think that there is a missing piece of a creative hub, a place where faculty and students can go to refine their ideas, to have inclusive access and democratization of access to the creator tools that we've discussed, a place where they can, where's decentralization of created content. Can you be the Spotify of all of these content so that that experience of memorizing the bones doesn't reside in just a biology course at Auburn University? but can it also easily reside in a kinesiology course at Auburn or maybe a biology course at some of your campuses? And so we can share the content that's being created across. Look forward to uh, taking your questions. Thank you. <laughs>